economy and only getting bigger. Should the president have this unilateral power to pull the plug on the Internet? Bill Daly is with us of Control Risks. So he says yes, that's William Daly. But Ryan Radia of the Competitive Enterprise Institute disagrees. Gentlemen, good to have you on the program. Okay, William Daly, I've got to, I've got to uh, kick this off with you. Uh, you think that having the president to be able to shut down the Internet in the case of an emergency is, is fine. Please make the case. I will. And first of all, I'd like to go and say, you know, first of all, I am very wary about limiting any type of civil liberties. So I, I do take this with a kind of a, a very jaundiced view. But I do think in this day and age, as the Internet has now become an integral part of our day to day lives and of the business life, it is important that that be included and be looked at very carefully. You know, Maria, we've given the president the authority to do everything from select terrorists who may be, you know, killed by drones and, and, and such. We, we've given him the power to be able to push a button and launch nuclear missiles, I think in this case, in the, in the event of a national emergency, he should have the power to be able to either communicate and use those communication tools, whatever they may be, including internet, uh, to inform the population or perhaps protect the population from some larger event that may be occurring. Well, maybe, you know, we could also look at China. I mean, you know, like when you're in China and you want to go Google Tiananmen Square, you're not allowed to. So maybe if you want to Google something that the president did that maybe half the country is against, you won't be able to get that information then, right? Well, you'd have to You're certainly... You're good with that. You're good with that. Yeah, well, no, actually, I think you have to look at the fact that this would only be during the course of a national emergency, and it couldn't just be done kind of in a willy-nilly kind of wake up on Monday morning and say, I want to suspend the ability for people to be able to do searches. But who's gauging what the emergency is? Is there a check and balance in terms of what the emergency is, or the president will just tell us what an, what an emergency is? Well, actually, if you look from 1976 is when they started tracking these. There have been about 32 national emergencies declared by, by presidents. Many of them, we probably none of us could really recall them very quickly. Uh, you know, it is under the authority of the president. But as I said, we give him tremendous authority already, including the ability to be able to, you know, interrupt broadcasts no such as this has for ever had national such emergencies. No president has ever had such an authority. Well, you pay, some people would say, and I would agree, that going back to 1934 in the Communications Act, is that the president had the ability to be able to interrupt communications, broadcast at that point radio primarily, television in the very infancy stages, and be able to broadcast messages or stop them should they feel as though there was some impending larger disaster. At hand. Ryan, Look, you have a problem with this. Explain it to us. Make the case. We can debate whether the president had the authority or not. No doubt this president and his predecessors have exercised a range of powers that are beyond their constitutional authority, but this is just the latest in an unprecedented series of power grabs. It's precisely because the internet is such a critical network at the heart of our economy that private companies who collectively own this, these networks need to be taking the lead in deciding what resources to prioritize. Giving the president vague powers where there's no clear grant of congressional authority to decide if there's a national security crisis that justifies taking over private networks is very worrisome, especially because there's no meaningful judicial review. A company uh, cannot challenge an order by the president that says, here's an emergency, you're a quote unquote critical infrastructure network. This is a complete affront to the Constitution and the basic principles of rule of law. It just doesn't sound like America. I, I have to agree with you there. But let me push back on you because I also, you know, push, push back on, on, on William. What if there is, you know, a massive emergency and the Internet gives away the U.S.'s secrets or some kind of information that perhaps uh, otherwise uh, should not be in the wrong hands? The proper governmental response there is to segregate the really important governmental networks, things like the networks of the FBI, the NSA, the intelligence community. Walling off those from the commercial internet is the response. People are going to be using the internet in an emergency to be communicating to their loved ones, to figure out what's going on. Crippling that infrastructure by having the government step in and assert emergency is actually going to make us less safe. It's going to make our ability to recover from a disaster less resilient. It's the, the wrong approach. You can do this to keep government secrets safe with far less restrictive measures than yeah. this. Look, I believe in the Constitution, and I'm a journalist, so I believe in free speech, obviously. So I've got I've to take uh, agree with you 100%. Gentlemen, thank you. William, I hope you come back because this thank is a, a debate that we really need to have uh, ongoing. We appreciate Definitely. your time, gentlemen. Thanks a lot. Up next is...